Oh, man. You want to wait one more minute for everybody? All right. I'm not saying anything. It's a little weird to say. I'm going <laughs> to I'm get you to say something. How's everyone doing? Yeah, see? Here we go. It wouldn't be talking real estate without technical difficulties. So we're trying to play through some technical difficulties, what, folks. Hi, Nino. What technical difficulties, difficulties do we have? Well, I can't get this iPad. Oh, it's supposed to do. Forget the iPad. Forget that iPad. All right. <clears throat> we got seven o'clock. Where's the timekeeper at? We got seven o'clock. Six fifty-nine. Six fifty-nine. We got one more minute to BS. All right. So, for those of you that are on right now, you can see that the screen behind us is seven o'clock. Correct. Are right, you ready? Get ready. I'm Scott. I'm Don. And we're, we're talking, talking real estate. estate. Now we have a great show for everybody today. We do. It's a crowded room in here. I've got environmental things happening everywhere. I've got timekeepers here. i got all kinds of market stats all over the place. This thing is becoming like a 10-person operation. All right, can you get the guy out of makeup? Eric Sloan, our guest, can you get him out of makeup yet? Yeah, he's, he's still in the green room. I think he's eating the M&Ms, the ones that are not green, though. I know I didn't want green m &Ms. Well, can we get somebody to start the show up? Tell you it, was what, in his tell everybody, it was in his contract, so, you know. Tell everybody where we're gonna, what we're going to do today. Give right. us the rundown. So today we're going to have, of course, our market update. Our topic number one is about... Wait, wait, wait. Who's giving us a market update? That's important. Krista Schunkweiler. Okay, Schunkweiler. Nice. All right. Keep going. Um, she has all the good stats. Hi, Sherry. So then we're going to go to the topic number one, which is about occupancies for sellers. Yep. Then we have our city spotlight, which is Rosedale Park in Detroit. We're going to talk about Detroit. There's some interesting, something interesting. Did there. you go down there today? Uh, I didn't drive by there today. I didn't didn't have the time. Okay. Okay. So, but I I, I would have liked. But I've been there before, so. Okay. I very much cool. Know it. So, and then we have an interview with a friend who happens to be a friend, a guy that I've gotten to know over the last couple of years. Eric Sloan from Sloan Environmental Services, and he's gonna he's well worth the the, the time to wait for to see. Is he, he coming in in a hazmat suit? That's what I want to know. I don't know. He's he's just still in makeup though. So and then we have topic number two, which is the seller's journey, part of the seller's journey, and then we have of course stories from the road, and maybe maybe Krista, maybe Eric, maybe me, maybe you might have a story from the road. Okay, there's plenty of stories from the road. Okay. So where are you where are you dialing in from? So folks, where are you dialing in from? Give us some comments. Tell us where you're coming in from, those good things like that. We always want to know who's watching and what's happening. That's what we want to see. Um, before we get started with everything else, though, Don, let's talk about the question of for the today. Day. Right? Question yep. of the day. When you bought your home, did the sellers leave something? And if they did, what weird thing did they leave? So, or anything. Yeah, what yes, yeah, so what did they leave? And the seller, when you moved into your home, the sellers, what did they leave? Because it felt like this week, every, clo every closing I had, somebody was leaving weird stuff. That's what it felt like to me. Yeah. It happens. It does. All right, so let's get on with the market update, shall we? All right, let's get it going. All right, so I want to introduce Krista Schunkweiler. She's our marketing stats. She knows all our marketing stats and has all the inside information. Hey, hey. Don't. hello, you. How are you how are Good, how are you? All right, so all right. Krista makes it work. She knows all the information you could possibly fathom about real estate. So you guys... Just fire questions at her. I'm so just, we just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Oh, well. We have some good, we, we get our data and our information, but Krista has the office data and she has really good stuff. And we, when we want to know what's going on in our world, our little world of Century 21, <laughs> this is the person we go to. All right, so, so you're getting give right us from something. The, give us something. All right. right from the horse's mouth, so to speak. In the past week, how many closings do you think we've had? 54. Higher. Higher than 54. 62, 63. Higher. 80. Higher. 100? A little less. Just over 90. Wow. One over week. 90 closes. Wow. One, one week. week. Okay. So over 90 wow. closes in a week. Okay. Been a little so busy. Yeah, yeah. Been a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is and, and closes only happen Monday through Friday. So you're talking about. Sure. Yeah. What is that? 20 ish. Yeah. 20, 80. That's 100. So a little less than 20 a day. That's yep. a lot. That's, that's a, a lot. lot. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a lot good. of activity. That's a good thing. That's, 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 just, that's a good thing for just folks. Our, that's just our company. That's just our company. Our yep. Company. Yep. Okay. Past week. Yep. Wow. All right. So let's that's do this. Let's talk about. Let's if you four out of a month, that's 80, 180, 320, 360. Something like that. Math is hard. Yeah, it is hard. So tell us this. We want calculator. To get an idea of the market, to get an idea of this year from last year with COVID-19 and all that stuff, because we've been touching that for months now, okay? Tell us this this June versus last June. 
This June, we closed 222 properties. Okay. Last June, 203. So we closed more wow, we now. closed more this time. Closed more wow. this June. So, so the, the market year. is hotter and more, more activity now. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And then let's talk about pendings and, and actives and all that good stuff. So current active listings in our brokerage, 299. 299, okay. Almost 300, wow. Yep, almost 300. Wow. And current pending transactions, 370. So, just start wow. with, yeah, so more pending than active. So, yeah. stuff's, stuff's disappeared. Yeah, wow. It's gone to the market, oh, it's wow. disappeared. That's good. Those are, and again, folks, that's where we try to give you the, the, the explanation for what the information means. If you have more pendings than, than actives, it means things are getting under contract quick. Um, we had more, we had more sold la this June than last June, it means the market's better. Absolutely. Right. So those are good things. Those are all good things. And Any other cool numbers for us? Well, in the past week, that 90 number, yeah. for some perspective, while we were in the stay-at-home order from May, March 23rd to May 7th, we closed 164. And we did in, 90. Was that six weeks? Six weeks. So during wow. COVID-19, six weeks. Wow. So we closed half of that in a, in a no, week. One, one, one week. week. Wow. Yeah. wow. So that definitely so impacted things. Yeah. 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 It definitely so impacted May things. May 7th, you guys really... Hit the ground running. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. You get stuck up in your house forever, and it's like you got to take off. You're like, all right, we got to do this thing. And yep. You can just show, what we had talked about before the demand that's out there really yeah, materialized it's still, it's still and actually happen. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's gonna, folks, to, to put this all into perspective, we're gonna think of it this way. It's still kind of the same thing we've been talking about. Buyers, it's it's gonna be a very competitive market for you. I mean, going from to get to get yourself uh, a house. But sellers, it's a seller's market, you know? Still is, yeah. Yeah, seller's market still. still. So we're not seeing anything to say anything different than that. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Chris, that was awesome. What else so, you got for how'd you, how'd you, how'd you like your first time? My first live. Ever. First live. Yeah. Ever? Not just with you guys. Yeah. Ever. Ever. No kidding. So what do you think? That's awesome. What do you think? That's good. How was it? It's was it fun? professional in here. Yeah. I like Did it. you like our makeup person? Were they okay to you? Yeah, they were all right. All right. That's you a got fantastic. my hair done before, you know? You wow. Probably, well, you probably I didn't get my hair done. I'm just trying to keep my hair. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm just trying to keep my hair. Maybe her hair that falls out, she you have to I can it staple it here and here. I tell people all the time, I staple it here and here, right? All right. That's how it goes. All right. Anything you want to add? I, you know, the sellers, when we bought our house, did leave something weird. What? And? Just an office chair. One office chair in the basement. With about an inch of cat hair covering the entire oh. chair. Really? So they, they have their left cat chair? Else. They left a rolling cat chair? <laughs> no, you rolling can cat chair. So that's why they, that's the reason why they left it. Because yeah. they had all the cat hair on it. So folks, here's what we <laughs> What about the cat? What rolling cat, cat chair. Now? No. So <laughs> when you when you bought your house, what did the sellers leave behind? We wanna know. What thing did the sellers leave behind? That's a good story. Weird, strange, normal, whatever. It always feels like they're leaving stuff behind. That's what it feels like. Crazy cat chair. Uh, last or Monday, people left a big bunch of wood all over the place they had to take care of. So they're always leaving stuff behind. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we will. We'll talk about that definitely today. Well, Krista, right. thank you very much. Thank you. You are the best. Thank you for having us on. And we'll have you back on again. What's your word? Absolutely. All Sounds right. All See right. you, kiddo. Thank you. All right, what well, are some good, some good, yeah, some good stuff? So yeah. it, it always, it's always good to see Krista. She's always got a smile on face, and she always knows what she's talking about. She does. There's a lot of people in real estate that don't know what they're talking about. Krista is not one of those people. Right. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. all right, Dad, so we got the market update. You want to talk occupancy? Yeah, I think this is something that's right now. I mean, we're, we hear about this every now and then that there's an issue with it. And, and sometimes sellers and buyers sometimes don't understand how it works and what it's really about. What's, it, what's the point of having it in there? Why shouldn't the seller just be out of the house? And we're gonna, you're going to talk about So that. here's the first thing. I looked on YouTube for about, about occupancy just to see what other agents, other people knew or, or what information they, they decided to give out. There was nothing. I mean, there was very little about real estate occupancy. There was about apartment occupancy and some other stuff, rentals and things like that. But there was very little about occupancy in real estate. And I think it's a subject people don't know about until... Boom, they're in it. Right. And they're in it. That's it's going on right now, and I'm dealing with it at that point. Yes. Right. Yes. Like, so, like, I'll give you yep. an example. Like, if I have a hot property, one of the things we're always asking for is free occupancy for 30 days. Mm -hmm. We're always asking. And the sellers are like, what does that mean? What are you, why are you asking for that? Because then I'll get through it a little for everybody. So, occupancy. Let's break this down. First, what is it? Occupancy is when a seller gets to stay in a home after it's closed. Okay. We, we kind of akin it to renter or landlord a little bit, but it's different. It's not the same. It's, there's, not all, there's not a whole contract right. written up with all kinds of stipulations. Right. So it's occupancy is when a seller gets to stay in a home after it closed and they got their money. For a very brief period of for, time. For a period of time. Yep. Yep. Um, when does it make sense? 
here's what it makes sense most times is when somebody needs the proceeds from that house, the sale of that house money, to go to their next home. Right. That right. They need that money to close. Right. That's when occupancy makes sense. Right. Because think about it. If you if you need the money from your house to close in your next house, very rarely does it happen back to back. It can. Right. But very rarely does it happen back to back. Usually it's within a few days. Right. Yeah. 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 But it, but again, it's time you're staying in the house after it's closed. Right. 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 So that's, I mean, a big deal. Now, let's talk nuances, like little specific things to to this thing. Okay, let's talk about occupancy. First, the state of the market. If the if you're in a hot property, a property that's going to get lots of showings and stuff, you're asking for it for free. Every time I have any kind of multiple offer situation, that's the first thing I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. Because it's a, a safeguard in case you do need that money or to make sure that the transition is more relaxed. It's not hurry up and rush my ass to, to get out of this and throw things around. And right. Like I had a closing. Let me tell you this quick one. Monday I had a closing where... They needed to stay in the house. The seller, which was not mine, needed to take all their stuff out by 5 o'clock. We had already closed, right? And they were running in the house and running out. And I got there. And it was like all hell was breaking loose. Mm -hmm. That's what you don't want. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you get some free occupancy, it makes it real easy for you to transition from one thing to the next. Right. And isn't part of it, though, that the seller, instead of if they, they had to be forced out before they closed on the other house, they'd have to move... Twice. Their property to know. Twice. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to yes. move twice. You, you want to move, move one twice. time. So the idea behind it is really to make it more efficient for a seller yep. to get from their house to the next house without making a move twice. Absolutely. So, so let's talk about typical occupancy, not the not in a hot market or a hot a property. Mm -hmm. Okay. So typically, what is you're paying what's called P I T I. Those letters P I T I, and what that means is you're going to pay one thirtieth of the the new buyer's mortgage. You're paying principal interest, tax, and insurance. So you're paying one-thirtieth of what a new mortgage is. Mm -hmm. Okay, like let's say, just for easiness, for ease of, of, of explanation, let's say your mortgage is 1200 bucks. Well, so 1200 bucks divided by 30, that's 40 bucks a day. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're paying. That's typically what happens. So do you, if you, do you pay the 1200 and that's it? And you had to be out in 30 days? Or do you, do you, what if you move out? So what if you're done in 10 days? Well, so here's what you do. You typically, the that's the next thing I was going to get to. Okay. Um, okay. The title company usually is going to hold what's called an occupancy escrow. Okay. So they're going to say, we're giving you 45 days. We're going to hold 60 days mm -hmm. just in case you go past that 45. Mm -hmm. Right. And then that, so that gives you the, your, kind of your time frame. All right. And there's a couple other things that you got to, to figure out. So you, the checks are cut. When a key exchange form is something that's signed, like you're you're the seller, mm -hmm. you've lived in that house, I own it now, but you've lived in it for 25 days, okay? Mm -hmm. So after 25 days, you say, okay, I'm ready, I'm, my ex house is ready, I'm moving. So you meet with your agent, your agent meets with, and I, I, I come with my agent, we say, okay, you turn the keys over today. So you sign a form that says, you know, on July 1st, I turn the keys over. And I sign a form, July 1st, I turn the keys over. So that form goes to the, to the title company, and the title company says, okay, he used 25 of the 40 days he had. Okay. Okay. So you pay the, the whatever the money is. If it's 40 bucks, 10, 25, right? Right. That goes to the, the new owner. And then if there's any remainder money, that goes back to you. Okay. That's how that works. Title company usually holds it. That's usually what happens. Okay. Um, a couple other little nuances you got to think about. Utilities. Okay. Utilities, electric, gas, you're paying those right up until that last day, whatever it is. And then the new buyer turns it on in their own name. Right. Right. Turns it on in their own right. name. The only one that's a little different, a little you gotta have some pre-planning for is water. Because a lot of a lot of cities you call them and go, hey, I need a final water bill. And they'll go, well, we can get it there in two weeks. Right. So you gotta kind of play that one. There's escrow money on the side that's sitting there in case you damage the house. I don't see that much. Right. Which is kind of funny because you would think you'd want some security. Yeah. But I think that when you have a seller that's been in there all those years, they're gonna they have a lot of pride with what they're doing, and you're selling, you're giving this selling this house to somebody that wants to buy that house, and I think they want to, and most people want to have it in the best light possible. Um, but sometimes things happen, but it's rare. Yeah, so I, I'm not gonna agree with you that. Rare. I'm gonna say there's a different levels of people. Like there's some people that clean it up. Like I had one lady, she was mopping floors even like before people got there. Okay, yeah. and I this house on Monday, it looked like hell. Yeah, but I think that there's a difference between damage and leaving stuff dirty or maybe not as tidy as as they should. But the damage is really is for damage. Though, right, right, right. Yeah, it's. Okay. I mean, it's got to be damaged. But here's the funny thing. Again, here's how the landlord, uh, tenant, and and occupancy are different. 
it's not all drawn out. Like if you mess this up, this costs you two hundred bucks. If you do that, it doesn't all run out. Right. So right. it's really, it's really great. Subjective. It's really Very great. Subjective. Yeah. And it happens. Occupancy happens a lot. I bet you three quarters of the ones we do it, occupancy is yeah. involved somewhere. Yeah. You know, because people need the money to move their next house. Yep. So, yep. folks, a question again to you. We love your comments. When you buy, when you bought your home. What did the seller leave behind? We'd love to hear what the seller left behind. So throw in the comments what the seller left behind. All right. Up next is the city spotlight. And Where is it again? Rosedale Park and North Rosedale Park. There's two areas there. It's bisected by Grand River Avenue. It's in yeah. Detroit in the city. And it's west of Southfield. And North Rosedale Park is north of Grand River. And, nor and Rosedale Park. Uh, historic district is south of Grand River. So that's interesting to me. Like this, you're doing the non-historic part. I'm doing both of them. But I mean, today you're. But doing I'm gonna separate. No, I'm gonna separate them out. Okay. And explain a little bit about both of them. Okay. Okay. So let's start talk about North Rosedale Park. <clears throat> um, they do have their own community association, and they have it. it it's been around for 100 years. No kidding. This year is 100. 100 oh, year so anniversary. this year. This that's year cool. is. Yes. Is that pretty interesting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1920 to 20. Really, 1919, I think, to 19 or 2020. Um, somehow, I think they're. Yeah. It's a little off there. So, but yeah, 100 years. Isn't that something? That's pretty cool. So, and it was considered a garden suburb at that time. So, think about that 100 years ago. There wasn't a lot out there. Detroit was way downtown, down Grand River. And that's why it became a very popular spot, is because. Grand River Avenue shoots right downtown, and people that work downtown in the city, they could just get on Grand River and... A lot of big houses? Some big houses, some yeah. good-sized houses. Yeah. Not like um, maybe the University District or uh, Sherwood Forest or something like that, but there's some good there's some good ones. Good well, so you know what my favorite so, one, my favorite part, my part of Detroit is what? I know you told me that before. You never can remember. I, t I tell you this I all the time. Remember. I know you do, but I... I must have said this like 64 times now. Oh, Brush I Park, buddy. Brush well, Park. That's it. I, and, I, and you Brush never Park. get it. You we always not, forget. We should do Brush Park so that I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is so there a street over there Park. called Scott Bergeron Park? Scott yeah, Bergeron Scott Bergeron Park. Park. Yeah, right. No. So, all right. So anyways. There's people throwing eggs at that park. Yeah. So they have, they do have dues there, and it's $75 for one year. So it's pretty affordable. I wonder what you so, get for $75. Well, they have. You maybe you get have, the Rosedale Park Gazette. Or something like the newsletter. Well, actually, it's called it's nice. the Rosedale. I think it's a tatter, tattler. T A T T L E R. It's a newsletter. Name, I was just it's kidding. It's a newsletter. <laughs> they, really, they have a newsletter for the community. I was just I kidding, man. Cool. I, was just I read kidding. it. I read it. So, um, the association has. A, it, it, they have a community house, which is really interesting. It's a really good sized building, and it's on Scarsdale. So it's a. They have a lot of community functions there, and I think, as a matter of fact, even Rosedale. Park Historic District uses the um, Scarsdale Community Unit. Uh, is there beef between them? The Historic District and, and the other Rosedale Park? They got beef? Like, we're historic no, or not? So. I think no, they work together there's pretty no, well. There's no rumbling going on? Uh, they work together pretty Let's well. Let's meet at Grand I River, sucker. Nobody's doing that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the house, that, that community house has kitchen. Or you can rent it. You lease yeah. it or have community function there or maybe a party or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so, I got you. Um, it has Wi-Fi there too. I thought that was, That's pretty, nice. that was pretty interesting. So, um, and they have a they have a farmers market in the community right now. Oh, so, so it's pretty kind of cool. Okay, so that should crash a Rosedale Park party. That's North Rosedale Park. Okay, that's on the north side of yeah north side of uh, Grand River, west of Southfield, and it kind of follows um, Outer Drive to Evergreen to um, I think Fink is it Finko? No, um, Five Mile, McNichol. Uh, anyway, move I, on. I, yeah, something like that. I, move on, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. All right, so Rosedale Park is south of Grand River, and there, this is a National Register of Historic Places. It was established in 2006. Okay. So it's actually a historic district. So you have to, when you when we talked about this last week, yeah, about historic homes that you have to, you have to abide by the association and the historic rec, uh, requirements. Yeah. So if the house is being painted in the in the same original color. You're okay, but if you're changing it up, it has to be for that era of the of the of the home. Gotcha. gotcha. So you have to really watch your. So what do we got? For tell me, there. give me some so, numbers. Give me some numbers. All right. So there's approximately in that area there's approximately 1,600 houses in that area, and they were built between 1960 and 1955. So actually, there this one this location's over 100 years old. 1916. Is that what you said? 
104 years old now. Okay. Community. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and they have a lot of older style homes like English Tudor, Arts and Crafts, uh, Bungalow, Colonial Re Revival, all these different styles of homes. And if you drive through there, you'll see a lot of homes with a lot of character. Yeah, I bet. So, pretty cool. Um, and that's about it for the um, what, it's, what it's made up of. So okay. let's get to the market's actual stats. Yeah, yeah. So active in North Rosedale Park, only eight homes are active. Currently on the market. Uh, 1,600? No, that's down. That's a Rosedale Park. Okay, okay. Um, pending, 17 pending, meaning the seller's accepting contracts. So again, the market's moving there again because pendings are twice as high as, as the actual. Absolutely. Yep, okay. And interesting, only one home closed in the last 30 days. Really? Yep. And the price was 180000 and it was approximately 1,700 square feet. So, so it's a good size, pretty square. decent size yep. home. And Rosedale Park Di Historic District, which is south of Grand River, there were 12 active, 14 pending. Still not a lot. And four sold in the last 30 days. Wow. And interesting. That's not a lot at all. So, that, the, so that's the, a pretty, you'd say that's a pretty sturdy, like a very consistent area, yeah? Sure seems there's like nothing I mean, going there's, 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 demand, there's definitely demand there. Yeah. Um, the average sale price in that community out of the four homes was 173 and the square foot, average square footage is a little over 1,900. So, mm. so you get more at a historic district home than you could in the other one? A little bit. It, you, yeah, but you, you don't have a lot of, you're not com really comparing the well, same number. number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that means oh, so I got you, I got you. one got house you. versus four. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think the north side, I've shown houses in that area, and there's some good sized homes there too. So, Rosedale Park and North Park Rosedale Park. Park. What's the average what was the average sale price of both? Do you have that or no? 180 for North Rosedale Park. Yep. But it was only one home that sold in the last 30 days. And south is 173. So, pretty consistent. Very same close, numbers. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, very close. Okay, very cool. All I'm right. Gonna go, I'm going to go party that big building. It's got Wi Fi that you talked about. I'm going to go party it would be, it would be. It would be nice, wouldn't it? So, all right, so the okay. moment you've all been waiting for before we go to it, though, answer the question. When you bought your home, what did the seller leave? What did the seller leave, if anything? So give us your answer. What did the seller leave? We'd love to see those comments popping up. All right, so next up is our guest, Eric Sloan of Sloan Environmental Services, and he's going to talk to us about... Um, hazardous things in homes and he's going to talk about some historic things he's done down in the city of Detroit and I'd like to have you have let's welcome Eric Sloan Eric Sloan's in the house here it comes ladies and gentlemen rolling in how do I look look good, good. Nice. nice 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 makeup guy is great I'm telling you see <laughs> he put a beard on you you didn't have a beard when you came in how'd that work that's great, eh? <laughs> listen that's a filter ladies and gentlemen that's how filtering works here that's a filter he didn't have any hair on his face now he does all right, so Eric, I'm going to start off with it. I'm going to ask you the, the easiest question, yeah. I guess, because it's a historic one. How did you start off in your business? Uh, I didn't like school. Okay. So, well, no, that's, no, I mean, that's, that's an honest answer. No, I've been doing it for 20 years. Um, my old employer went out of business. I went into it. I was going out of business. And, uh, scoot down. So, uh, uh, scoot where? That way. There you go. There you go. No, All right, go ahead. Sorry. All right, sorry. So you were in school? No, I wasn't in school. I hate school. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and you've been in the business twenty years. No, I, yeah, I've been in the business. Uh, my old boss was going under, and I met a buddy downtown, a demo guy. Um, kind of talked me into so go on your own. I'll give you some work. Um, he didn't give me no money. So I think about two Which years. Which would have helped? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think yeah, it it took about two talk. years after I met him to finally say, okay, let's, let's, get let's, going. let's refinance the house. You know, me and my wife said. So what, but in the interim, that two years, what were you doing to get by? I was still in the business working for somebody else. Oh, so it was like a, almost like a side gig for you at that time? I guess. Well, it was a full-time job, but I was, yeah. you know, and I was just like. Working that. I was that calling, my, I was calling my buddy every week, like, hey, you're still going to give me work? You know? Yeah, 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 I got you. Know, you. I got so, later, hey, you're still, yeah, still going to give me work. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after, after that, you took that risk. Yeah. And has it paid off for you? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, um. It has its days. I mean, it's, business is great. It's stressful in yep. business. You know, but no, it's definitely worked out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take care of the family, I'm sure, yeah. right? Takes yeah. care of the family. Yeah. Food on the table. Yeah. Good. Good. So now we're good. Good. So it all worked out. Yeah. So, it's working out. all right. Yeah. So let me ask you this question then. What kind of things do you run into when you get, we're talking about residential mostly, but what kind of things do you run into as far as environmental issues and challenges? Mm. 
In real, just in like residential? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, my, a lot of residential I do is for like uh, Belfour and Signal, restoration guys. Yeah. So the house, okay. you know, either okay. it was a fire, um, flood, so the people are out of the, out of the house, which makes our job a lot easier. Um, so I, very rarely somebody I really know, I'll actually do the residential job. Okay. You know, that they're okay. occupied. Um, but the, the biggest thing, I, I mean, you know, hiring the wrong guy. Everybody wants to hire the cheap guy. You know, the only jobs I'd come in after the cheap guy screwed it up. Screwed it up, and now, yeah. the, now they're paying three times as much. So be careful who you hire. Do your, you know, look into it. You know, make sure they have a license. Make sure they're insured. You know, I mean, Facebook. I mean, you got all those, you know, Google. You can Google yeah, my yeah. name, and you're going to see what comes right. up. Right. Yep. You know, yep. so do your, you know, check into it before you just right. hire anybody. Yeah, right. absolutely. You know, cheaper is not always better. Right. So, so what happens with these companies that they have to end up calling you out? What, are they, what, what happens that, what don't they, the other companies not do that they have to call you for? So I'll say like a vermiculite ins insulation in the attic. It needs to all be gone, 100%. You know, when I do a, a baby job, can't leave any behind. Right. right. So we'll find, we'll come, you know, they'll go up and say, oh, stuff everywhere still. Right. Yeah. So they didn't do the complete job 100%. Yeah. Right. Or the hire guy that contaminates their whole house. Okay. Does a removal in the basement. Doesn't, yeah, do, a prop, goes everywhere. doesn't do a proper containment. Now the whole house is contaminated. Wow. I've done house on growth. That scares meals. me a little well, I got to go in and throw all their, all their stuff away. Really? They're bagging up all their stuff. Once it's contaminated, I mean, like for wow. So you have to buy, how do you block it off? Like, how to, like, explain that to me. How do you contain? So, I mean, for in the living room, we're going to put up basic plastic all the walls off. You know, the doors coming in are going to be zipper flapped. You know, okay. We'll have negative air machines. Um, really? You know, if it's friable material, we'll have a shower decon system hooked up to the door. So you'll walk into a dirty room, then you're going to a shower, then you got to, you know, like oh, a wow. three-chamber. three, three chamber Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's completely, completely, so completely cleaned out. completely separated. Yeah. The guys have to shower out when, they, when they're done. Wow. So it's, that's it's a, serious. It's a, it's a yeah, that's way serious stuff. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's the primary the type of jobs you do? You, for the residential, it's mostly like I said with the with the restoration guys. Okay, okay. You know, okay. I do I do some you know some people do call me. Um, you know, I do most of my stuff's commercial. Yeah, but okay. I will you know friends call hey. So I mean I do residential. Too. Well, so, so okay, so you got let me yeah. Tell you, dude, I, so we we talked before and we were talking about asbestos and vermiculite, and you you had mentioned that you don't always necessarily have to get rid of it. Can you explain when those situations might apply? Not that you don't have to be concerned about it. When should you be concerned about it? When should you not be concerned about it? Uh, yeah, if it's in good um, good condition, you know, say you got pipe insulation on a pipe. It's not disturbed. It's not ripped open. It's not torn. It's, it's fine. You know, it's the best insulation, actually. That's why they used it. Yeah. Right, right. Um, when you run into problems is when they do, you know, you got the furnace breaks. Now you got to get a plumber because usually that's a boiler system. Um, so the pipe breaks, and so now you got... They got to get rid of the asbestos. So switch situation like that, we do that a lot. Um, you know, vermiculite. If it's in the attic, they're going to be ripping walls out. You know, sometimes it's in the walls. You know, it's in plaster, it's in drywall, joint compounds, and floor tile. So if they're doing a renovation, you know, they're, that's they run into. That's when they're going to have to take care of it. But if it's in good good condition, there's no reason to right. do anything. Exactly. We were talking about this before, like like ceiling tiles. Mm -hmm. like, you just leave them be. Yeah, leave them be. You know, it's not going to cause any problems. No, it's not going to cause any problems. Because people get freaked out. Like, oh, yeah. It's possible, but they start freaking out. Right? Is that those the nine by nine or the twelve by twelve ones that are stapled? Is that the ones primarily? Yeah, a lot of times it'll be the glue on the back though. Right. Oh, like the glue okay. pods hold it. Hold it up. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, huh. sometimes it's a tile, but we well, with the floor tile too. Yeah. Yeah, the floor tile, the nine by nine tiles. You throw carpet over it, you're okay. Yeah, just throw a carpet over it. Just don't tear it up. Yeah, and you're you're fine. Because right. I feel like for us, when a private inspector comes in, they go. Yeah. Possible asbestos, possible that freaks people out. Like, oh my god, the whole world's gonna end. Yeah. Then so, they go on Google and they're an expert. Yeah, and all yeah. of a sudden, I know everything yeah. about it. So, so we, we had, <laughs> I remember we, you and I had talked about this a while back about the tiles mm. when a homeowner, let's say you, you know the nine by nines, they start popping off, they start mm. drying out, the glue dries off, they pop up, and they may have asbestos, they may not. Let's say they, let's assume they do. We were talking about this, I said, so, wow, you got, you're supposed to put that in a bag and take it to a certain dump or anything like that. But well, you 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 corrected me on that. Well, Do you remember that conversation? Uh, can you explain that? Not. Yeah. Um, but 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 is that is that true that a homeowner, homeowner has to take it to a hazardous dump? No, I mean they uh, actually a homeowner can do whatever they want. Okay. If they have asbestos in the they can do whatever they want. You want to rip it out? Yeah. But, but throw, throw they, it at the curb. Go ahead. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean yeah. I, I I know the DEQ or Eagle now they're called. 
the, the regulations have changed on that, so I don't mean before it was you could they had nine by nine tiles in the basement, right. bag them up, and they could throw them at the curb. Okay. And the garbage man would take them. Yeah. You know, I know they made some changes to that, so it could be a little, oh, so it could be a little different okay. now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was the case in the in the past, and people would ask me, well, why do you got to do all this? Crate, you know, we got to double bag it, put water, you know, special dumpsters, go to a special landfill. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it was kind of crazy that they could just throw it away at the curb and. Yeah. You know, you know, all of a sudden, you're a professional. You got to do more, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe the, the homeowner. How many homeowners are going to do that? No, not a lot. Know, so. it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. Floor tile, not so much. When you get into pipe insulation, boiler insulation, yeah, brick yeah, insulation, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. stuff you got to yeah. really worry about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to worry about it all, but that's the bad stuff. But it's not as long as you don't disturb that stuff. It's okay. Correct. Okay, because like I said, people and freak out. Like, oh my god! Well, you got these homes with these, you know. 1960s, 50s, 40s. These families lived in there. You know, yep. you know they're 70, 80 now. They're perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a bad. I know private inspectors love to point that stuff out all the time. Oh, and again, yeah. they have to. I get it. But like, it shouldn't be <gasps> like your breath just leaves your lungs. You know no, I mean? it's definitely not. All right, so let's talk about something else, a little more, a little more fun. You've done work downtown. Yep. You've done work in historical buildings. Give us some of the ones you're either worked on or you've been or you're working on, going to be working on in the future. So, I mean, I've been in so many, a uh, few highlight ones, you know, Shinola Hotel project, we did all that. Yeah. Uh, the old Saunders building, uh, it's 1515 Woodward, which is H&M now, Link LinkedIn is yep, in that yep, building. So yep. I, did, I did that whole building with my buddy, we did that together. The David Staub building. Staub, wow, that's, a, that's one of my favorites. Uh, you know who that is? The big red one? Yeah. I guarded the other one, the big red yeah, one. That was a cool one. Yeah. Um, the old State Savings Bank on uh, Ford Street. Uh, the Tall East Building, which is Lululemon, okay. the corner. Uh, we're at the Book Tower now. I've been there for three years. That's going to be a cool one to see when it's done. No kidding. I think there's 2022 is when it's going to be finished. So that'd be one to go. Are they, use, are they turning into like a, the candles and stuff? or? Uh, it's going to be mixed use. I think retail. Uh, I heard all kinds. Of, That's a cool know, building. You know, it's a very good yeah, building. It's, it's, so it was seen the one with the green. Like the, the greenish awning in that. Yeah, that's a cool the place. Pink, the pink buck hoist on the outside. That's right, but yeah, it's right by the book Cadillac Hotel. It's yeah. not far from there. It's pretty yeah, that's, cool. That's place. a cool one. Yeah, that's cool stuff. So we, before we st before before we went on, you were talking about the train depot. You did some work down there. Yeah, my old company. I was yeah. in my old company. Oh, okay, did, okay. Did a couple yeah. couple years there before. Yeah, it was before Ford. Yeah, way yeah. before. Ford. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Before yeah. Sloan Environmental. Yeah. And yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wait for that too. <laughs> All right, so we always love to ask people this this question. Give us some stories from the road, some interesting things that crazy, weird things you got involved in. Are there any? I'm sure there are. No, I thought about it. I want to keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> keep it clean. This Put your children away. Too. We're gonna tell some fun <laughs> stories. Put your no, children I away. Just, you know, I just Damn keep it. it clean. I mean, it's not nothing too crazy that's clean, but. Um, you know, I've said, you know, a guy, a guy walked in an elevator shaft, 12 stories fell, boom, dead. Whoa. Yeah. No, not with my company, not, not with my company, but, you know, yeah, was working in business, you know, throughout the years. Yeah. 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 So the guy was working, he just fell right to the shaft. Yeah, they had no guard, no guardrail, no nothing. He was a young kid, you know, I was younger, at, I, was, I was in my 20s. Yeah. So that's, that's a crazy one. You know, we find, you know, dead bodies. Wow. Um, I think the one was on the news a couple years ago. I think one of my guys found them. Uh, he's an artist. I forget what building it was. Um, but yeah, they found his dead body. Just found him late. Just found him laying there. Yeah, I think it was in the elevator pit. Oh, no kid, wow. So, I think so, it was under ice. Like, really? He'd been there for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we were talking this weekend about you're doing that one job in the, in the shaft, the uh, elevator shaft. Oh, yeah. And so that guy falling, is that the reason why oh, you're so nervous yeah, about that yeah, job yeah, there? That's, that's, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, you said it's stressful. Well, safety's key, you know. Safety's Yeah, is you don't want anybody to get hurt, yeah. Well, you're talking multi-level buildings and stuff. You're not yeah. talking about some two-floor house. You're talking about 20, 30, 40 floors yeah. or something. That's a whole different game. Well, yeah, but that one that you're doing right now. Yeah, right shaft. now I'm doing, it's oh, like 13, nice. the building part of the book tower is 13 stories. Okay. So yeah, we're removing the plaster and the shaft. Yeah, oh, it's it's you know safety's key. You know, there's a lot of safety that goes into that, but it's nerve wracking. You yeah, know? it's you yeah. know you don't want nobody to go hurt, get hurt. We got right. families, they got families. It's I take that very seriously. Yeah. So how long will that job begin to end take you? The elevator shaft. Yeah. Uh, we anticipate eight weeks just for the shaft. Okay. We should finish a little quicker. Um, so two months. Okay. Yeah. So once they get done with that, give you a little relief of. 
It'll stress off a little bit. Well, it'll be on the next project. <laughs> yeah, next project. Yeah, right. right. never ends. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, never ends. All right. <laughs> All right. I get it. I get it. Right. So, well, thank you very much. Thanks we're we're glad you came because oh, I just wanted somebody that knew what they were talking about to say, mold, asbestos, and all stuff. Don't mess with it. It's fine. Well, mold, well, we didn't get into molds different. Than, yeah, yeah. Molds a little different. We don't I mean I don't know how much time we have. So, yeah. But molds different. Yeah. You know? So, so we did like, talk about that. You up in the attic, up in the attic space, and in, in that that you had mentioned that to me about. Man, it's not that big of a deal, right? What vermiculite? No, mold up in the attic. Oh no, attic I mean space. yeah, because a lot of times the inspector will go in there and say, oh, yeah. mold, black stains. You know, a yeah. lot of times it's nineteen fifties. It's water. You know, it's black water stain. That's right. You know, maybe they had a little roof leak at one right. point, but right. they got it fixed. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's where uh, they just come in liability. Liability-wise, they just say, oh, it's mold. Yeah. You know, okay. They have to. You know? Yeah, so that's that, But it messes up a lot of deals. You know, I go in all the time, and people want quotes, you know, and, you know, they never do anything, but. So, and I know we're going to run on a time crunch here, but, like, if there's mold in the attic, what's, what's a fix you can recommend? Every situation's different. Okay. You know, every it's, it's every about have, you know everything's different. You know, is you, it just where the vent goes from the bathroom? You know, is it properly vented? You know, right. a little bit of mold. We go up there, some chemical, clean it up. Easy fix. Yeah. You know, or is it growing throughout the whole attic space? Well, now we got to remove all the insulation. You know, it could turn into a big job. Okay. You know, so it, it all varies on. On the what was the severity? What's the severity of it? Yeah. yeah what's yeah. the problem? Yeah. Do, you, do you test it's the it? source? Do you test it or does somebody else test it? Oh, uh, no, I'm not. It? So it'd be licensed, like the third okay. party. And that's but an environmental you, inspector, not just a, right. you know, inspector. So that's where you would come involved if there is a certain type of mold in there? Or do people just say, I, I, this is mold here, I want it gone? Uh, sometimes like that, but sometimes they'll get, a, you know, a third party uh, inspector in there. They'll write a protocol and basically we'll follow their protocol yep. to remediate, oh, okay. the, to remediate their okay. issue. Okay. Okay. So, okay. It must be like uh, the old Dave Delfino and... Uh, yeah, pillar to post, guys. Pillar to post, so. yeah, absolutely. All right, well, you have well see, questions? that's the stuff we needed to hear. So I'm glad you came on because yeah. that's the stuff I wanted to hear. I wanted somebody else to talk plain English on mold, asbestos, and vermiculite. Because every time you hear one of those words, people just freak out. Yeah. So, so if, if one of our watchers needed some something looked at, you know, they have mold or asbestos or something, is that something you can help them with if they reach out to us or reach out to you? Yeah, for sure. Well, Once you give a plug, do you have a business number? Yeah, I mean, 313-686-0004. Uh, my email is sloanenvironmental at yahoo.com. You know, I'll come out for free, take a look. You know, I'll give you my advice. Um, help and, that's, and that's what people, I mean, that's no, somebody honest. that knows what they're looking at. Right. Somebody that's honest that knows what they're looking at. Yeah, better yeah. than and we were talking. Online. And that's another thing we were talking about. So we work out together, and I've, we've talked a lot. We have a lot of these moments and to get to know get to know each other and you me get to know you and you were talking about how when you started i was asking you this and i remember you saying um the guy that that wanted you to go work from it the integrity your integrity mattered to them that and to gilbert you know that to the to rock that you you're going to do what you say you're going to do and you're not going to um you know, just be honest, fair, yeah. you know, honest, yeah, fair. I, I mean, I, just keep, keep you working. Yeah, yeah and I, and absolutely. I, I can vouch for you. I, and that's, what and that's know, what you hope so, for. Yeah. That's, that's the right way yeah. to do things. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Absolutely. So, anything you want to add? No, I appreciate you. You want to say, how to your, to say hi to your wife? Uh, she probably didn't want to. <laughs> she's, 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 she's got the kids. She's probably laughing She's at watching the kids. She's like, so throwing she's darts in the screen. Boom, boom. She's watching the kids. I'm getting made fun of when I go home. Yeah, yeah. Well, you did great. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. Stacy did a great job. So, all right, so, well, so we're running out of time. So, how about if we do topic number two next week? Yeah. And let. So I got a story from the road. You have. Sure you stay. You stay with us. You stay with us. You gotta with us. finish up with us. So. Okay. So I, I do have a story from the road. You know, I, I I don't ever think of these things when I'm there, but this mm -hmm. one came to mind this week. So. So wait, 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 wait. Ladies and gentlemen, sit down. Don Lawrence has a story wow. from the road. Are you ready? Uh, you do, 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 do. You've now entered the Don Lawrence story. You don't, you don't have, you don't, don't be, it's not all that exciting or anything. But anyways, so I, so I sold this property, a commercial property on Van Dyke in the city. And the, 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 it's a business, the, the husband and wife, they had a business going in there. And now the, just, it was earlier this year that they purchased this property. Well, they wanted to see the property next door that was been vacant. It was vacant when they purchased the one that they're in now. 
and they wanted to know if I could figure we could get in there. So I found out who it was, who owned it. I talked to an agent and we were able to get into the property. So I scheduled an appointment to go show this property and it's been vacant the entire time. Even when they were, they were next door, they didn't yep. see anything happening. And we show up for the appointed time and there's some, there's these hose going in, the side doors open, there's some guys in there. I'm like, what's going on? This was not expected at all. And so we went in there, they were, they were washing the rug. And so as we walk through, we go to the back towards the, it, it was a, it, it was an entertainment club for men. I, I'm assuming it was, <laughs> it was a strip men. bar. Down it was a strip bar. <laughs> so we go toward the Eric back. Eric and I both know what a strip bar is. That's right. Wife so, watching? Yeah, and, It'll yeah, be yeah, okay. <laughs> so we go to, towards the back. There's a kitchen and the bar back there, you know, stand up bar. And the roof is on the floor. So there's no, this leaking there. We go to the basement, there's six inches of water, and there's water running inside, and these guys are up there washing the rug. Yes. <laughs> this See, right? that they rug is important, it. baby. No, they, they, were, they were just there. They didn't own it. The owner had them there. I don't think the owner knew the roof was bad. I don't think he knew the ba the, the water was in the basement. And like, now, you want to know what the moral of that story the craziest is? craziest thing. Know what your job is. If your job is to clean that damn carpet, it does not matter if it's it quartered for the rug. It did. They it got paid for it. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. I will make sure this carpet is clean as hell. <laughs> so anyways, that's my story from the roads. All right, guys. Listen, it doesn't happen often, but Don does have stories from the roads, just so you know. I right? probably have more of them. I just have to keep it in the back of my, or in front of my right down. back here. Write them down. So I promise. So you we understand the format got a little goofy today. Um... We wanted to get uh, have Eric give as much information as possible because again, we get questions for, about asbestos, vermiculite, uh, mold, and stuff like that all the time, all the time. So we wanted to make sure to give you as much time as we possibly could. And so we concern, appreciate the good, for honest information. We yeah. really do. Yeah, no problem. It's a concern right. for everyone. So yeah, absolutely. And we want to thank Krista for being on. She gave us some great stats and numbers. And yeah, you ready? I'm ready. I'm Scott. I'm Don. I'm Eric. And we're talking real estate. See you later.